Hello, I'm Mary O'Brien with Project 1100, a small NGO that works on behalf of the habitat, pollen and nectar needed by native bees on Forest Service and BLM lands, and works to end the permitting of honeybee apiaries on these national public lands. I'd like to tell the story of one variety of one plant species that appears to be signaling that all is not well with management of the small alpine area in the LaSalle Mountains of southeastern Utah. The plant is Senecio fremontii variety in expectatus or LaSalle Mountains groundsel. The genus Senecio is worldwide with over 1,200 species and includes a large range of structural approaches to being Senecio. The species Senecio fremontii, with four varieties, is present in the light green counties of these western states. The variety in expectatus is found only in the LaSalle Mountains of southeastern Utah, and one small patch 80 miles east in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. In 2019, this variety was proposed as a species by Asteraceae specialist Guy Neeson, on the basis of leaf morphology and geography, but for now, the Forest Service retains it as a variety, albeit a species of conservation concern. Enter into this story mountain goats, which are native to alpine and high elevation lands north of Utah, and which have been introduced to numerous mountain ranges in Utah. In terms of native plants, their diet includes lichens, mosses, sedges, ferns, forbs, graminoids, and shrub twigs and leaves. They were helicoptered into the LaSalle Mountains 10 years ago from the Tusher Mountains to the west in central Utah. Pine areas and communities are rare within the entire Colorado Plateau, which is outlined in this map and the alpine area in the LaSalle's is small. In the LaSalle Mountains, Senecio formantii variety in expectatus, or CEFRI as an acronym, exists between 11,000 and 12,200 feet, as shown in the light area on the map. Its model potential habitat, shown in red, is about 240 acres, though the actual occupied habitat is smaller. It's a species of persistent snowbanks along ridges and on steep slopes and flowers for about two months late in the season from mid-August until mid-October. While generally growing in the open, on or just below ridges and on steep slopes, Sefri can also find protection amid rocks and can be found at the edge of goat wallows, such as this one, in which it may have been earlier growing before being dug out. Colorado botanist Al Schneider found one patch of Sefri, about 80 miles east of the LaSalle Mountains in the San Juan Mountains in Colorado. He indicates that the photo here encapsulates the entire singular patch. In 2013 and 2014, the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources helicoptered 35 mountain goats into the LaSalle Mountains over the objection of the Manti LaSalle National Forest. The UPWR goal is an eventual year-round alpine population of 200 goats. The current number of goats, according to August 2022 UDWR monitoring, is estimated to be 93. In the wake of the Forest Service objection to goat introduction, the UDWR agreed with the Forest Service to a joint plan to annually track for five years the interactions of three impacts, year, recreational use, and mountain goat use, on three types of outcomes. First, frequency of three of the 11 alpine plant species of conservation concern. Secondly, cover of vascular and non-vascular plants. And thirdly, proportional ground cover. 
This research has been implemented via geolocated transects, repeated photos, pellet counts, and wildlife cameras at several locations. The results of the study were published in 2022, nine years after the initial introduction of the mountain goats. The three authors, Gene Chambers, Barb Smith, and Scott Baggett, are Forest Service scientists. Well, the 2022 study discusses a number of trends, none of them favorable for plants. Three particular results were found to be statistically significant. First, proportional ineffective ground cover, that is bare ground plus pavement, has increased with goat use days. And perhaps related, forb cover showed an almost continuous decrease over time. For almost continuous decrease, note that in 2019, which was a better year precipitation-wise, forb cover was slightly higher than it had been in 2018. Thirdly, and most closely related to our story, the proportional frequency of CEFRI declined, and specifically where goat use was high, and recreational use, which is mostly hikers, was low. Demic and critically imperiled LaSalle mountain daisy, Erigeron mancus, also declined, but not statistically significantly. Where goat use is high and where recreational use is high. Higher growing season pre precipitation was correlated with higher proportional cover of cephri and forbs and graminoids. These are two graphs from the 2022 study focusing specifically on cephri. On the left, the proportional frequency of cephri in the places where it was present declined, with its frequency lower each year except in 2020, perhaps in response to better precipitation the previous year in 2019. On the right side, the graph shows that CEFRI proportional frequency is lower where goat use days are higher. So, might CEFRI be regarded as a canary in this alpine fell field community? Historically, canaries were sometimes taken down into coal mines with miners because they had a rapid breathing rate, small size, and high metabolism compared to miners. In the presence of carbon monoxide or methane, the canaries would die sooner than miners, giving miners a chance to take action. Cephri is particularly exposed to goats on ridges, grows in a path goats use to travel between peaks, provides forage late in the season, and is already known to be significantly declining. Should cephri be taken as a warning that other native plants in this alpine region need action taken on their behalf? What's next? Project 1100 is planning with several organizations to submit a petition this fall to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for listing CEFRI under the Endangered Species Act. CEFRI is a Forest Service species of conservation concern that is declining in cover. NatureServe ranks it as a critically imperiled variety. It grows nowhere else in the world other than in the LaSalle Alpine area and in that modest patch to the east in Colorado. The major immediate threat to the small population of Cephri is the current grazing, trampling, and wallowing by mountain goats, as well Climate change with its heat, drought, and reductions in snow cover is threatening all alpine communities. While not necessary for a listing position, we hope in 2023 to help fill in information on CEFRI's direct linkage with other species in this alpine community, specifically pollinators. For four summers in 2016 to 2019, entomologist Tim Graham collected insects 
including pollinators, in the LaSalle Mountains Alpine area. He is completing the recording of all data on those pollinators. Sephri attacks a large variety of Lepidoptera, Hymenoptera, and Diptera visitors. This fall, we're hoping to determine whether Sephri is dependent on pollinators for seed set and to better understand the direct impacts of goats on Sephri. Some identified the potential for Great Salt Lake's decline decades ago, and now the lake is indeed at the brink of dissolution as a functioning ecosystem. Some of us stated in 2013 that a year-round growing herd of non-native ungulates would inevitably degrade the LaSalle Alpine native plant community. A five-year study was undertaken, and as seemed inevitable, this alpine community is declining. How would mountain goats not lead to the same outcome for the plants in Logan Canyon, where the UDWR is proposing to introduce more mountain goats? 13 Forest Service sensitive plant species grow there in areas goats would use. So far, the plan is not openly resisted by the Forest Service. Thank you. I welcome any questions or suggestions.